but not at WrestleMania. What the heck just happened? The final boss, Roman Reigns, strides in the back with the Bloodline members. Members. But the show starts off with Logan Paul killing it with his douchey personality, getting much better with his promo. I started to believe him when he praised himself. Out comes Kevin Owens to a good pop. He talks about how he would have defeated him if it weren't for the brass knuckles and how next time he definitely won't miss. Logan Paul brushes it off as a bluff and goes to commentary, while Kevin Owens will be facing Austin Theory in a match. You think you're always like blatantly surprised with this feud? I know it's for the US title, but these guys have chemistry in the ring and on the mic, and Logan's obviously really good. I like how Logan took a shot at CM Punk and his injury. Austin Theory is still one of the most unlucky stars in WWE. He literally has everything it takes to be a man eventer, but it never happened even when his daddy, this big man, literally held his hand. And Kevin Owens is just lost in the shuffle. He just isn't someone who becomes boring. Anyways, after a good match between the two and some brass knuckle shenanigans, Kevin Owens picks up the victory after knocking them out, then chases Logan Paul out of the arena. Theory is easily growing to be one of my favorites on the roster. Man's got all the ring talent. The perfect thumbnail the photographer deserves a raise. Then we see Naomi in the back with the SmackDown contract. Then comes Tiffany Stratton also with a SmackDown contract, cementing herself by slapping Michelle after facing off with Bianca. Kid Lee, Montez Ford, and Jimmy Uso are some very lucky guys. We have a tag team fatal four way qualifier match. But before that, Bianca is talking to Aldous about getting a world championship shot. While Logan Paul also comes in to demand a challenger that isn't Kevin Owens. Then we see the ex LW having the Pablo Escobar meeting at the back, talking about how much more mid they will have to be from now on. My favorite faction right now, they are so talented, they deserve to be in a WrestleMania. Well, I don't back to the match, pretty deadly would absolutely be big one day. Their personality fits perfectly with the WWE. The LWO teams have some of the best luchadors in the team who once had one of the biggest potentials. Storylines and presentation matter a lot, but I'm always patient with these things, and Tyler Bates and Pete Dunne are some of the most impressive contenders. It just sucks how NXT stars don't transition well to the WWE. But after an obvious entertaining match, Dunne and Bates take the win. I'm so glad WWE is just letting Pete Dunne to his fullest potential again and hopefully this is only the beginning. LWA actually never disappoints. Backstage you see the best women's wrestler of all time Asuka, Bukari Sen and Io Sky, completely roasting Bailey, I think. Then Io Sky says Bailey is done, then laughs at her. Then you see Bailey watching them looking very sad at the betrayal. Anyways, I love Asuka. Next we got North Samantha Ivan introducing Bailey while she walks with her crew looking pissed off. She gets into the ring and talks about how great and accomplished she is. Mom is backstage looking all good as always. Then she talks about how damage control is like family, while they are laughing at her in the back. She talks about how the group talked about her behind her back, even speaking a little bit of Japanese. Then she starts to cry about being betrayed, about how Sky chose her own kind over her since they came on. Then they absolutely beat her up Officially turning Bailey face again. I kinda hope she comes back as Balloon Bailey, bro. But Bailey eventually gets the upper hand and officially declares herself as a challenger for ESK's women's championship. Shout out to Asuka though. She should be in the match in my opinion. I hope you go forward with this matchup for WrestleMania because just the storyline alone really should be reasons why this match goes forth. Those pants Bailey is wearing are my favorite ever. Next, we see an amazing entrance by the Final Testament. And I don't know what's wrong, man, but Kaden Cross has everything for the main event scene. Everything, except the fans putting him over. I had literally forgotten the AOP even existed until they came back. And they were absolutely amazing in NXT. I hope this becomes the push they have been looking for. Because the previous pushes didn't go so well. Then we see Bobby, Dawkins and Ford coming out looking stupid with this horrible ring gear. Oh my god, do I hate this fucking ape. 
they should be wearing something much better than this something more fitting to their characters like jeans or something i don't know i just i i just don't think that going from wearing suits to wearing leggings is cool also if angela dawkins was to beef up the fighting was exactly what you expect from a heavyweight bout before bobby lashley locked in the headlock started but before bobby lashley locked in the headlock scary interfered in the match but not until someone comes in and kicks her in the face the car wasn't into it but let's give it time Bobby Lashley hits the spear and is done. I love that nation of domination pose. I was afraid that B Fab was going to get released due to the new collapse. I'm glad they found something for her. Backstage, we see the only tribal chief equal, Nick Aldis, talking to the next WrestleMania main eventer, Braun Breaker, where Adam Pierce comes in and basically tries to poach him, making Braun a thing signing at the moment, taking time to think. Then surprisingly, Jade Cargill comes in which was absolutely shocking to me because I really thought she was started NXT first. Also, I like this weird general militia beef they're having. Nick all this versus Adam Pierce. Please have Braun break on Raw. He's one of the ones who I actually see turning Gunther. Come on, WWE, make it happen. Up next, the next longest reigning women's champion debut was SmackDown. Tiffany Stratton, the most beautiful and athletic star. Facing off against Mission of the OC which I literally thought were released until this very moment. Anyways, Michi needs a different storyline. She seems very off in these. Anyways, Tiffany Stratton is just absolutely amazing. The result was obvious here. Tiffany hits the prettiest moonsaults of all time for the win. Give all the gold right now, bro. The future of the business right here, she will break all records. Prettiest moonsault is the most beautiful and catchy finisher ever. Welcome to SmackDown, Tiffy. Many event time, baby. We begin with the 800 minutes entrance from our tribal chief, the naval mover, and God more himself, Roman Reigns. Say what you want about him. He might have saved WWE with his bloodline storyline. Roman Reigns evolved to be the greatest wrestler of this generation, undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Then goes on to only speak absolute facts. Might be one of his best deeds, to be honest. He calls Seth his little bro and says exactly, no pop. He then destroys the title, calls the title the loser bracket title, also clowning him for calling himself the guy when he wears his wife's clothing. He then clowns his workhorse gimmick, taking a shot about how injured he always is, calling him a workhorse with a bum leg. He then tells Cody it's his choice to pick either the number one title or the number two's title. Roman cooked the world champion so hard, Cody has to bake him, right? Right? Out comes Cody with his 28 minutes entrance, getting a decent whoa. He then tells the bloodline to get off the ring so they talk alone with Roman Reigns. He talks about how he talked to people about making this decision. He talks about how Roman Reigns cheated him in WrestleMania. And he talks about how he wants the undisputed WWE Universal Champion but how finishing the story means he wants to take everything from him. But not in WrestleMania. He then says one of the people he counseled is here, and out comes The Rock with his 78-minute entrance. With Alabama obviously eating this whole thing up. But like, come on, bro. WWE didn't make me like Cody for this thing to happen. They then hug each other with The Rock whispering to Cody in his ear. He walks away like a good employee he is. Then, the Samoan bloodline face off against each other. No words said, just gazing into each other's eyes. Then Reigns just leaves the ring, looking all mad. Anyways, The Rock takes the mic and says, Finally! Understand? Felt so out of character when Cody left the ring. You win the Rumble, almost beat Roman last year. Want the title for his father, but give it up for The Rock. Sad. Funny thing is, I can actually see the Mania crowd turning on rock for the way this all played out.